everybody, this is Chiesa Tatra Mavangira, an inspirational cheese that's right now. Today I'm going to keep this really super duper short and sweet. Remember back in the day when I started out on social media, my inspirational chi talks were pretty short and sweet. My communications teacher tells me that the sweet spot is 45 minutes. So I'm going to make sure could I don't take you guys over that 45 minutes, but today we're going to hit an even sweeter spot. I'm only going to be here for 10 minutes because I've got class. But I wanted to talk to you briefly about uh, dream interpretation. Now, I read somewhere that when we pray, we talk to God. When we pray, we talk to God or the cosmos or higher powers. Hi, Clara. Today I can't greet you all because I want to make sure that I pack as much information in the nine minutes that I have left as possible. But as always, you know that I love you all and I really welcome you to my platform. Ooh, itchy. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about the premise that when we pray, we talk to God. But when we meditate, we listen to God. Let me repeat that. And as I continue to take my advanced classes in communication, you guys are going to hopefully notice a lot of things changing about my communication patterns. You're going to notice me become more focused on the audience that I'm speaking to in terms of my ethos, pathos, and lagos. You're definitely also going to see a very um, conscientious, uh, effort towards me improving my articulation and my diction. But that's the advanced communications uh, class that I'm taking. And all those are things that are notable for a professional speaker. Okay? So back to today's topic. Today we're going to talk about um, the fact or the premise that when we pray, we talk to God. But when we meditate, we have an opportunity to listen to God. Now, a lot of you understand the concept of meditation, whether it's the monastery, idealistic, a monk sitting on a mountain and taking a vow of silence kind of meditation, or it's your $9.99 a month on iTunes kind of meditation. I'm going to give you a more organic a more effective form of meditation, listening to God, aka listening to your higher power, or even for those of you who are atheists, just simply call it listening to yourself. And a lot of you don't listen to yourself. You put out a lot of requests into the universe during the day. You pray for success, you pray for healing, you pray for breakthrough. You want things to go around with your spouse, to go right with your spouse. You want things to go right with your children. You spend the whole day bombarding the universe with energy, whether that's your verbal uh, words, whether that's your non-verbal body language, your nuances, just energy. You can feel good. Damn, this person has got negative energy before they even open their mouth. Or Somebody who just walks into the room and they've got a pet to their step and before they even open their mouth, you just see the spark in their eyes and the flash of their teeth and, it's, and the, you know, the stride of their step and you're like, that's, a, that's an upbeat, positive individual. Those are all messages being sent out to the universe. My question to you is, do you meditate? Why don't you have a response to your prayers, your postulation and your requests? Do you meditate? Now, for me, I'm somebody who keeps a G. I keep it real. Somebody can be like, oh, meditate. So it took me many, 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 many years to understand that concept. And my self-philosophy that I came up with, which is backed up in academia and other works of literature and art that I won't specifically go into because it's not an academic discussion today, is that when we dream, patino rota ope, that's a, an internal meditation. That is our mental person's way of synthesizing all the things that happen throughout the course of the day. It's actually a psychological relief spot where you get to let off steam, where you get to synthesize everything that's happened to you during the day 
where you get to understand arc symbols, universal symbols, and basically where you get to speak to yourself in the form of dreams. Saka, your dreams are not random. For those of you who don't dream, there's exercises that I'm going to be sharing with you in my new book. Dream Quest by CTM, Dream Quest by CTM, how you're born with your dreams, you live with them, and unfortunately, as per Dr. Miles Monroe, the most valuable place in the world with all the gifts and talents that have not been used is a graveyard. A lot of you die with your dreams because you don't know how to communicate with them. So there's a disconnect between what you send out and what you get back. So the premise of the book Dream Quest is to give you the tools to navigate your own dreams. So let's go back to the campus of dreaming. So when you dream, there's certain arc symbols. Arc symbols can be established either by your religious context and framework. They can be established by the books that you've read. They can be established by the home you were born in, your culture, your traditions where you live geographically, could are you in New York or are you in Zimbabwe, are you a priest or are you a whore, all that doesn't matter. It's not a respect of morality. Welcome, 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 welcome. I can't greet you individually, guys, because I'm on a short clock today. I'm about to enter my lecture within the next uh, couple of minutes. We'll keep it short and sweet, but as always, I'm so humbled to have you here, and you guys know that. So your dream palette and the symbols of your dreams are like a language. Saka, when you start teaching a child a language, you don't just go to very sophisticated use of language. You start with simple words. Jump. Come. Go. No. Yes. And then you build on the use of those words to come, John, come, sentence. Go, Jane, go, sentence. No, Peter, no, sentence. Until you cultivate more sophisticated language and the purpose of linguistics, which is another field of study for me. I'm going to be in school for a minute. I've been in school for a minute because of my uh, academic um, interdisciplinary studies. I'm, I'm learning more than one thing simultaneously. It would be overwhelming for some of you. Some people ask me, Chizo, what are you studying? I can't even tell you guys. It will be no putika. But just know, Kuri, I am dazzling my teachers. I'm um, studying many things simultaneously, and I'm going for my advanced education. Saka. That at least gives you your credibility in as far as where am I getting my material? Does it have academic backing? Yes, right? I'm not just making things up as I go. And I always make reference to text content, doctors, tutors, you know, professors, books studies so you always know specifically where i'm getting material and if you've got an interest you can always go and divulge by yourself and educate yourself further so in the palette of dreams you have to first understand your basic dream language for me i was very fortunate growing up because my mom who is an amazing inspirational woman she taught me to understand the meaning of my own dreams so i choose to be very simple i'm going to give you an example for instance, in a lot of cultures, we know that if you dream about a snake, nyoka is a negative arc symbol. Whether it's in Judeo-Christianism, kanakuti, it's in uh, colloquial, traditional, kanakuti, it's in voodoo, religion, usually a snake is seen as a negative metaphor, kanakuti, a symbol. Sakaokarota nyoka, it usually means something negative. However, if you were born in the context of, say, ancient Egypt, where they worshipped snakes, okay, your framework of reference would be different because to you, the symbol of a snake would be associated with a, with a positive feeling. Let, let me repeat that. When I speak words, I'm communicating abstract ideas, right? Invisible concepts and ideas, but I use my words to be the vehicles to communicate the things that you can't see that are intangible. That when I speak about something being evil, evil is invisible. You can't put a finger and say this is evil. You can say this is the embodiment of evil. A snake can embody evil. A lying, cheating woman can embody evil. A stealing, murderous man can embody evil. But 
Evil itself is an abstract, invisible energy that sometimes can be embodied or represented by certain symbols. Given the culture, the time, the geographic location, the people involved. So 101 for dream language is you're going to have to understand what your arc symbols are. Do a brief homework for me. For those of you who do dream, for those of you who don't dream, we can have a different talk about how to activate your dreams. For those of you who are blessed enough to dream, understand that it's your subconscious mind talking back to you. So given the symbols of your dream, you'll understand what it represents. And like I said, it's all the things that are coming at you during the day, advertisements, what you listen to, what you hear, what you think you saw, what you saw out of the corner of your eye, you would go crazy. Your mind would explode like a computer that's overloaded if you don't have a place to dump that stuff. So like your dream language, your dream world is the place where your subconscious your higher power, your inner self, your higher intellect, your subconscious mind, the part of you that wakes up when you sleep, that's where it sorts out all the information coming to you during the day. That's why for people who have intuition, and I only have a couple more minutes, keep it short and sweet, for people who have an intuition, which is a fluency of communication with the dream world, but therein, within that framework, I know to I in the rota, the rota And usually, for people like that, within a very short period of time, shogorning ratu ya kutkwa rubari wa kana tu kwa fiwa. But they had the premonition, kuti something was coming. Kana kutu mu mu na nuko na kurota chizama kupuruka sma papiroka singa sumuki. If you speak to that person, they've got a career goal or an aspiration that they're going for, but they can't find the momentum, the financing, the support, the capital, the backing up. There's something lacking to give them wind beneath their wings. So that's your dream world and your dream language saying, Kuti, we feel that there's a barrier. Even if you're a confident person and you think you're passing up, but it means that there's something about you on a deeper level, on the most meaningful level, not the superficial level that says fake it till you make it, but the level of you that needs to activate the manifestation of reality. Welcome, t -Can. That part of you will be saying, I'm disabled. And I mean not able to. I'm disabled. I'm not able to make that move. And the thing is, you're defeated inside before you're defeated externally. So to the extent that your dream language is telling you, you can't outrun a problem or a situation or a feeling or an individual. You need to be aware of your dreams. Number one, keep a journal next to your bed. I'm going to be selling some chi dream journals that have some wonderful cues for you when you wake up in the morning. Specific questions in my book, Dream Quest. That will ask you, Kuti, what is the first impression? How do you feel? Some people wake up with a sense of um, nostalgia, okay, missing something that they can't put a finger on. Some people wake up with a sense of melancholy. Melancholy is a dark, heavy feeling. You're somewhat depressed, but melancholy in of itself is not a bad thing. Melancholy is an indicator because you need to be cautious of something or somebody or a situation. Be wary, pay attention. But if you do not have a dream guide, a dream journal, and the tools that I'm going to give you in my book, uh, Dream Quest, you'll let that melancholic feeling that is your tool of empowerment. Your internal voice saying something is wrong if you don't digest it properly when you wake up. The moment, the second that you wake up, melancholy, a melancholic feeling turns to depression. And depression will weigh down your day and it will shut down every opportunity. And depression is a mind-altering uh, personality disorder. That changes the way that you perceive things, the way that you respond to your uh, environment, and it's debilitating. It can cause you empathy, laziness, to sit down. It, it's actually kujuroya. Depression is a form of self-witchcraft because you have allowed a melancholic feeling that should just be telling you, Kuti, you need to change this situation. It's not healthy. Your husband beats you up. That's not good. You don't need to pop a pill. 
A lot of you, you are depressed because you have let melancholy settle into depression. But the depression, the melancholic feeling was not a bad feeling. If a melancholic feeling is telling you to get the hell out of an abusive relationship, it's a tool of self-preservation. If a melancholic feeling is saying, ah, brace yourself, that's a tool of reinforcement. Saka, your dream world is a beautiful, wonderful power that you're not tapping into. You don't need to go to another person to tell you the meaning of your dreams, unless you're a student of dreams. If you're still a student of dreams, you can come to someone like me. I have the gift of interpreting dreams, which I have used uh, usually only with my own family or friends, people very close to me. I can do it to myself. You can learn to do it for yourself as well. It's a language. It's like I can say I speak Shana, I speak English, I'm learning French, I, uh, I'm learning and I speak Spanish. I understand Spanish fluently, but I, I speak it on the slow because I, I've been in an environment where I don't have to speak it, but I can hear and I can cultivate my tongue to speak Latin, Old English. It's the same thing with saying I speak dreamology, the language of dreams and symbols. The first thing I would have to ask you is, what does this symbol mean to you? It's luck. Usually, when I come to crucial life decisions or business, because my father was an entrepreneur, so that the symbol of Zebron Tawuchira Mavangira to me is a power player. If it was a chessboard, he would be my king piece. Depending on the facial expression, should I sign this contract or not? That has feared me well. Right now, since you guys last spoke to me, Tongoti, from the ending of the coronavirus until now, I've received 60,000 60, US dollars in commissions for my other business, my real estate business. And what happened is Dakarota Babavangu. And Babavangu Rindi Timuka, Paupizo Karara. Babeta Sakut Varakundi Mut and Data Sundi Munam Chech, I regressed to my childhood framework. And this is second letter sent to Kumba Kodun Dimanam Luk Varkun di Musa Kuti Muka Kani Muka Muka and Dita Semuna Kaka Remer when you open the Sasha Tizindu Dakura give me five more minutes, but it's Muka, that's Muka, that's Muka. Saka, when I woke up as somebody who interprets dreams, as a writer, a lot of my inspiration, actually, all of my inspiration comes from God. It comes from the three Greek muses of inspiration to be inspired as this wrong. It comes through me. And I take what I want from that same gift. So I woke up and I went to my Chi uh, dream journal. He kept saying, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. But his face was surreal because my dad was a short-tempered man. And in a context of a bad relationship that I was in, I was like, I was and that was a disastrous situation. Very bad people. I was surrounded by very, very negative energy. And I number one, and I knew could ancestral energies or whatever you want to call them were taking care of me. But at the same time, I knew that my father was disapproving of the environment. And I made a list of all the things that I knew he disapproved of. And I, I knew I was away. And to the extent that I ignored my dream warning and my language, but the moment that I got out of that, before I made my $60,000 commission, I took my dream journal with the cues, and you guys will be able to get Dream Quest on Amazon soon. First question, how do you feel? I'm not feeling anxiety. And then these are the cues you'll find in the dream quest. When was the last time that you experienced this feeling? This is how I used to feel on Christmas morning. It's going to be a wonderful day, but I don't really know what. But I just know what is Christmas and there's presents under the tree. Then I said, okay, Saka, what does this symbol mean to you? I feel a sense of excitement, not anxiety. I feel like a sense of expectation, expecting something. Saka, in my dream journal, which when you guys buy the book Dream Quest, 
Kumbira, it will ask you questions and then it will give you the formula to now interpret your own dream and unlock your destiny. Kwandiri, my message from that dream journal, which when you guys buy the book, if you can't unlock your own interpretations, you can always book a one-on-one -on -one session with me uh, via Zoom or some other apps and I'll be able to go through one or two with you and teach you the language of your own dreams and you don't need me. In any, my purpose is to empower you to be great, to do your own things, not to babysit you. I'll, it'll take some time depending on how well you know yourself and your symbolism and your core symbols, and then you'll be good to go. And your, <laughs> your testimonies are going to be scary. Okay, talk about trending and being, it's going to be powerful. Saka, I, I say, Cheza, what, what, what is your dream language saying to you? Ndikati, I'm being told to wake up Kumuka, hakuna pa wope, but kumuka pa mea, to be alert, to be attentive, ndika pani opportunity. That's when I actually decided to put myself in rehab. Ndika tukuni mbuma wangu, ay, nah, 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 and shadi lori, and I don't think I'm succeeding in a home environment. Then he took me to the five um, star spa uh, Malibu rehab. And when I was there, I was working on myself, working on myself, working on myself, exercising, getting my skin clear, working on myself, getting clarity, clarity, sobering up, getting in touch with my counselors. And I told you guys the amazing win I had. That was the first step. Boom! Dasangana, these big time people who are changing my life and all this opportunity, I'm getting sponsors, everything, because I listened to my dream. Basically, wake up from this addiction. Break free from this addiction. You are like Munakarara. You are being weighed down by the past, your problems. You are not sober-minded. Feel the excitement. Something good is about to happen. So that was the first win, but that wasn't even what that dream was making reference to. But I'd unlocked the door by listening to my inner self. Shanzi, when we pray, we speak to God. When we meditate, we hear God. When we dream, we hear God. Saka, for those of you who don't dream, God ain't speaking to you, and that's something you need to fix. Maybe you're not praying, and therefore there's nothing to respond. Because if you don't send something out, could you help me? Can you bless me? There ain't going to be a response. Some of you don't even pray. You don't postulate. You don't articulate. You ain't sending the messages out. That's just one of many reasons why you might not dream. Then I got to go. A few more minutes. Saka, in conclusion, that key unlocked my destiny. Because by the time that I had rehabilitated myself, come home, my skin is clear, my attitude is correct, I've been validated. The Kabandaita bumped into the client for the real estate deal that gave me $60,000 post that rehab experience. If I had met that client, Ndaka vumba tirwani spirit ya addiction, masongwari read, this naku chain and this naku geza. Looking fly like this, let me show you how fly I'm looking. That opportunity would have, wouldn't have been put into my hands. But because I was in a positive headspace, okay, look at this. Look at Zaka Shrikab. Okay? Positive headspace, well dressed, articulate, alert, because my ear was open spiritually. Could something good is about to happen to me? When the person said, You said you're a real estate agent? Boom! The capture. Because you know what? I'm just starting out. I'm not established. It's very difficult to break into the industry, but I work with a very, very highly esteemed established broker. And if you give me this opportunity, I will never let you down. You can probably find people a thousand times better than me, but you will never find someone more passionate than me. Because when I dedicate myself to something, I give it 100%. And that's how I got my deal. Okay? Real estate market is booming. And I got put up and I to Musa Hakiri negativity from place. Hey, Zunjaka Woma, Zunjaka Woma, Zunu Zipi. Things are really good. People who can't afford, Kanakuti, who have been devastated, are selling. And those who can afford are taking it as an opportunity to buy. I've got so many friends in the business who are, <laughs> they've never been more lucrative. Saka, is your glass half empty or half full? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Saka, the key is to understand your dreams, your dream language, your dreamology. If you've got any questions, please feel free to inbox me. In conclusion, Nasinda wrote a white horse with wings. 
First I conquered it. And you can see, ah, it's no better bizarre in my papyrus, no rewe. Because that's a very elusive creature. And we know the symbol, the symbolism, the universal symbol of white is purity. It represents freedom. I want to ride this horse. It's beautiful. Is this a unicorn? But Then I got onto that horse. And it started running. It was just treading, treading, floating, and then it took full flight. Saka, I definitely know could something positive, beautiful, powerful is about to happen. It's a symbol of freedom, emancipation, victory, and success. And as you guys continue to join me on my journey, and I share some of the things that I experience and some of the techniques, you can tell for yourself the proof is in the pudding. But once again, please watch out for my new book, my latest books. There's so many books coming out, guys, because I've been writing for over 20 years, but I'm only publishing them now. I'm just going in there, editing them, making them relevant, but I've been a writer all my life. So I look forward for the book called Dream Quest for those of you who are interested in unlocking your dreams and your destiny and also definitely look out for born without borders coming very very soon thank you so much guys for joining me i love you so much if you've got any questions inbox them this is your thursday inspirational cheese starts right now head bowed bye